For this practice update, I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizula. Thank you for joining us. Today I have with me Dr. Jose Antonio Karam. Dr. Karam is an assistant professor, Department of Urology, Division of Surgery at the University of Texas's MD Anderson Cancer Center. Dr. Karam, excellent to have you back. Thank you, it's my pleasure. So your group recently published work on one of the rare subtypes of renal cell, known as medullary cancer. Can you delineate some of your findings? Sure. So we recently published in the uh, British Journal of Urology International a uh, study that was led by Dr. Amishi Shah and uh, myself and Dr. Nazar Tanir from Andy Anderson. Uh, it included a total of eight centers, though, from uh, different mm -hmm. uh, institutions and uh, different countries. And we looked at 52 patients with renal medullary carcinoma, and these were collected over a 15-year period. So this is a very uncommon tumor. And it's also a very devastating tumor in that it affects mostly patients of African descent and patients with a sickle cell trait. So these patients in general have a survival of about one year from diagnosis, which is very devastating in this typically young patient population. So what we found in this most recent study is that the overall survival was still about 13 months, so barely over a year. The findings that were important from the study is that patients who were treated with targeted therapies such as tyrosine kinase inhibitors or uh, VEGF receptor inhibitors or um, mTOR inhibitors did not respond to these treatments. The patients who did have a response are the ones who received cytotoxic chemotherapy. And in general, this is therapy such as gemcitabine cisplatin or MVAC or carboplatin paclitaxel. And the other finding that was important from the study is that the patients who were able to have surgery had better survivals than, than patients who did not. Oh. Of course, this is a retrospective study and there's some sure. bias involved, but it tells you that if the patient is healthy enough to have an operation, typically we would like to offer that to the patient because there is a signal at least that it might help. So mm -hmm. in general, for our institution, the way we handle um, the situation is that all these patients are discussed in a multidisciplinary setting. Yes. We confirm the diagnosis uh, pathologically and with immunohistochemistry with a SMARC-B1 loss or INI1 loss. And then if the patient has a good performance status and is a surgical candidate and has limited metastatic disease, they typically undergo surgery first, followed by chemotherapy. If the patient has a poor performance status, or visceral metastases, or they're not surgical candidates, typically they will get chemotherapy first, and then later on we'll reassess, yes. and if they've had a great response and their performance status is good, we might offer surgery afterwards. So you're still taking an individualized approach, but you've really outlined an excellent algorithm for our clinicians who are viewing to follow. That's correct. And this is based on a multi-institutional experience. But sure. again, we have to keep in mind this is retrospective. Sure. And what's even more exciting are the prospective trials that are ongoing yes. right now in centers such as ours at MD Anderson and colleagues at Memorial Sloan Kettering as well using EZH2 inhibitors and this patient population. When do we expect to see data from those prospective trials? So the trials are still ongoing right now. They have not finished the accrual as far as I know. So hopefully within a year or two, we'll start seeing some signals. Excellent. Now switching gears a little bit, what are your thoughts on metastasectomy? Features like sarcomatoid disease, for example, mm -hmm. might that dissuade you from considering this procedure? Sure. So in general, we recommend metastasectomy for patients who uh, have had their nephrectomy done at least you know, one or two years prior to developing metastases. Yes. The patients who undergo metastasectomy in general are those who are typically younger, uh, they have good performance status, they have limited metastatic disease burden. Now we decided to look at sarcomatoid as one of the risk factors. These patients have a very poor survival as well. And what we've found is that in general, patients who have sarcomatoid kidney cancer, they don't do well after metastasectomy, mm -hmm. especially if the disease-free interval was less than a year. So okay. if they present it with metastases at the initial diagnosis, yes. these patients do not benefit from metastasectomy. There was a trend towards benefit in patients who developed the metastasis afterwards. However, this was not statistically significant. So for these patients, in general, we do not offer metastasectomy. But of course, we have to individualize each patient and there are some patients who might qualify, but this is not the norm. And that's the bottom line, personalizing it and tailoring it not only to the preferences of the patient, but the characteristics of their situation. Absolutely. That's wonderful. We want to thank you so much for sharing your expertise and for outlining very clearly a nice algorithm for our clinicians and viewers to follow. My pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us for this practice update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizula.